Yes, this is the good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Won't you rejoice and be happy in it? Because God is good. He's merciful. He's kind. He's loving. He's the almighty. And he is the impossible God. The reason why he's the impossible God, because he can do impossible things. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I want to give all honor to God. I want to give honor to his son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us. I want to thank you, believers. I want you to know that you have a new nature in you. And that new nature is the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. I want to thank you for your words, God. I want to thank you for your holy words, God, your blessed words, your words that transform and change and make a person a better person than what they ever be in Heavenly Father. I want to thank you, God, for eternal life. I want to thank you that I'm going to spend eternity with you and your son in the new heaven and the new earth huh? and, and also in the new Jerusalem. I'm blessed because of you, God. I'm blessed because of you, Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, I want you to know today that you are blessed that you are blessed in God and that you are blessed in Jesus and blessings is all around you. Just take them and receive them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have a message for you today that I want you to grab a hold to. I want you to sit back and meditate on it and I want you to chew on it. I want you to digest it and I want you to put it to work in your life so that you can live by your faith and let the impossible God work in your life. The God that does the impossible. The God that does the things you can't imagine or think about. But we got a God like that, you believers. I want you to know we got a God like that. If you believe in Jesus Christ and he's there to work for you, not to hurt you, but to benefit you, I just thank you, God. I just thank you for your love and your mercy and your kindness and your grace and your all love and your all around love that you give us all the time. And you know everything and you see everything and you're present everywhere. I just want to thank you, God. And that's why I call you the impossible God. Because it's as human beings, we are limited. But with God, there is no limit. But with God, there is no limit. <laughs> So the title of this message is The Impossible God. The Impossible God coming from a Christian perspective. See, the impossible God can't transform you if you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and be born again, and you continue in his words. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Can no other God do that besides this God? Bless that wonderful name, reason. The reason why I titled this message The Impossible God God does the impossible. God do the impossible. God can do more than what you ever think or imagine. God do the impossible. God can do more than what you think or imagine. Go to Ephesians 3.20 and read that. I'm probably going to read it again later on. But go to Ephesians 3.20 and it said, God can do more than what you think or imagine. That means if God can do more than what you think or imagine, that means we got a limit. Human beings got a limit. They can only think and imagine so far, but God go way beyond that. Now, ain't that the God that you want in your life? The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't that the God that you want to that you want to take care of you? The God that you want to look up to? The God that you want to humble to instead of some type of idol? Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless you, Heavenly Father, for all the great things that you have done for us and continue to do for us. God can and will continue to do the impossible. God will and can continue to do the impossible. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you believe that God can do the impossible? Do you believe that God will continue to do the impossible in your life? In your life. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all my rights. And he said, I, I will take care of all your needs. He said, I will take care. He took care of our spiritual need through his son, Jesus Christ. Through his son, Jesus Christ. He supplied, but you got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means you got to believe in Jesus Christ. That means you got to be born again. 
Bless that woman for the name Jesus for the sacrifice he made for you. The only sacrifice we think about is when he died on the cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of sin. But let's think about the sacrifice of what he went through on earth before he went through that cross to do the ultimate sacrifice. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> and you can't give Jesus no praise. You can't give Jesus no praise for what he done for you so that you can have a relationship with the true God. The true, impossible God, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You should be up right now hollering saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sacrificing all what you did. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Then it goes on and says, it's hard to believe that what you think cannot be done, God can do. Ain't it hard to believe what you think cannot be done, God can do? And the reason why it's hard to believe because if we believe that God would do it, we would do it. But our faith shattered in that area. And we put a limit on God. It's not that God is limited. It's that we put a limit on God. They think that God can't do it. And because we think God can't do it, we become double-minded. And we doubt what God can do. That's why Paul said, you understand, we must live by faith and not by sight. So otherwise, we got to get out of the physical world of seeing things. We got to go into the spiritual realm and get connected with God so we can see what God can do. Because we serve an impossible God that do impossible things. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for connecting me to God, to the true God, and to the impossible God. Thank you, Jesus, for making it happen. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. What's impossible with you? See, what's impossible with you? I'm telling you right now that you are limited just like me. We are limited. So sin might be impossible to us. You understand? And what it might be impossible to us is not impossible with God. Now, that's where faith come in. That's where faith come in. That's where you got to put your faith in God. That means you got to trust God. You got to believe God. You got to have confidence in God. You got to commit to God because we got to put our faith in God so God can do the impossible in our life. When you can't see a way out, then you call upon God. You're looking for God to make a way out. And guess what? God do. When you involve God's in the situations of your life and you're praying to him and you're asking him and you've been obedient to him, the impossible God goes to work in your life and do the impossible. And then you say, how did it get done? It just had to be God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. It just had to be God that did it. That's why he's, that's why I call him the impossible God. So that's why you must trust God in all areas of your life. Now, do you trust God in all areas of your life? Do you trust God in all areas of your life? If you don't, it's time to start trusting in God, relying on God in all areas of your life, calling upon God in all areas of your life. Because we need God. We cannot survive without God. God is what gives us life through his son, Jesus Christ. See, because of Christ now, you have a personal relationship with God and you can pray to God and ask God for certain things. And God is going to look out and God is going to look out for you, but you got to believe in the impossible God. You got to believe in the power of the impossible God. You got to believe in the authority, in the authority of the impossible God. Where are you at with it? Where are you at with it? Where are you at with it? See, see, that's the whole thing. Where are you at with it? Where is your faith? Where is your confidence? Where is your hope? If it ain't in God, if it ain't in God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, until you believe it's your Father, it's not in the right place. It's not in the right place. See, God is not limited. God is not limited like you, or God is not limited like me. Understand that? 
Understand that? We are limited creatures. We can only go so far. God can go beyond what we think imagine. God can do things that we cannot even think about doing. That's why we have to have God in our life to make it work because God is not limited. See, because God is not limited like you. God is unlimited in what he can do for you. God is unlimited in what he can do for you. There's no limit on God or what he can do for you. Do you believe that? Have you accepted that in your life? You've been born again. You say you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You believe it in the word. You're walking in the word the best you can. But are you letting God walk with you in this word through the power of his Holy Spirit that now dwells in you? When you face a problem in life, do you take it to God? Or do you try to solve it by yourself all the time and get miserable, frustrated, and upset? See, God is not limited. That's why we got to turn it over to God so we can continue to live in the peace that God has given us. And we can live in that abundant life that Jesus said he came to give us, a complete life. And that complete life is in Christ Jesus. But you got to believe in the impossible God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. See, he can for you. God is unlimited in doing all things. See, see, see. Some things we think God can do, and some things we think God can't do. You see, 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 see. We got a, we got a tendency to be like that. Well, I know God can do this, but I don't think God can do that. Well, I'm going to tell you now, you got to get out of that state of mind. You got to renew your mind. You got to get out of that state of mind and say, God can do all things. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> and say, God, do all things. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Now, do you believe that God can do all things? Do you believe that God can do all things? If you believe that God can do all things, then you know God is impossible. You know God can do the impossible. And that makes him the impossible God. If you believe that God can do all things, I do. I'm doing. I'm growing and I'm trusting him more. I'm learning how to trust him more than doing all things for me. Because when I try to solve things on my own, I guess what? I got a tendency to mess it up because my flesh want to get in and do the wrong thing. But when I turn it over to God, let go and let God, when I turn it over to God and I let go of the issue, I let go of the problem, I let go of the situation, and I turn it over to God, I'm not going to sweat it no more. And God is going to take care of it. It's going to work out for my good. That's what I believe. I believe it's going to work out for my good. Because I trust God. Because I trust God. Because I trust God. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you serve an unlimited God. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I want you to know that you serve an unlimited God. So let's quit limiting God. Let's quit limiting God. He's the almighty. He's the all-powerful. He's the all-knowing. He's the all-present God. He's there for you. He said, bring your cares to me. And he said, I will look out for you. He did. He said, His Son Jesus Christ has said, uh, You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Then he said, Paul said, Then I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Oh, then it goes in First John and say, Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. <laughs> then he goes on and say, Faith is your victory. Do you have your faith in God? Do you have your faith in Jesus? Do you have your faith in the Holy Spirit? Do you have your faith in the Word of God? And if you got your faith there, you are living in victory. And don't let nobody try to change that thought. Because they try to change your thought. And then when they try to change your thought, and then they do change your thought, guess what? Then you'll start limiting what God can do. Then you'll start limiting what God can do. But God can do all things 
bless that wonderful name of Jesus. God can do all things. I got some Bible verses. Matter of fact, I got quite a few of them. I got some Bible verses I want to go over with you today. And I hope they be a blessing with you. There is one true God. Go to 1 Corinthians 8, 4 through 6. 1 Corinthians 8, 4 through 6. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, today is a good day to get to know him. Today is a good day to know him so that you can be with the impossible God, so that you can have a relationship with the impossible God that is Jesus' father. Then you can have a relationship with Jesus. So go with me to 1 Corinthians 8, verses 4 through 6. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. See, to idols. We know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. You see what he said? He said an idol is nothing. All these people got these different type of idols that they try to worship and give praise to. Yeah, or whatever type of idol it can be. Don't necessarily have to be an object. It can be witchcraft. It can be anything. But to an idol. And to, but he said the idol ain't real. He said the idol is fake. He said the idol is fake. And that there is none other God but one. And there is none other God. There is another. There is not another God besides the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the ones that believe in Jesus Christ. There is no other God. That's the only true God. If He do the impossible, and He do the impossible, God does the impossible. That's why I titled this the Impossible God. You got to know. That you got a God that do the impossible, and that's why He is called the Impossible God. Can't no other God do what this God do. That's why this God got the capital G, and the other guys got a small G, because them guys are nothing when it comes to your God. Your God, the you that believe in Jesus Christ, we got the mightiest God on this earth, the Creator of this world. On our side. On our side. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. For though there be that our gods, that's with the small g, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So there are going to be many gods and there are going to be many lords, but they're not going to be capitalized because they minor gods. Their gods have no power. They have no strength. They can't give you no confidence. They can't give you no hope. Some of them guys want you to kill yourself if you listen to the religions. Some of them guys want you to sacrifice your kids and kill them all. You understand? Some of them want you to kill yourself. But bless the, thanks be to God, we got the God of life. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. We got the God of life through his son, Jesus Christ. The impossible God and true God. That's who we got. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. Then it goes on to say, but to us, there is but one God. Now he's talking about, look here, believers, let me tell you. To the believer, there is nothing but one God. Who bless their wonderful name, Jesus. The Father. Who? The Father of whom are all things. Of whom are all, are all things. He's everything. Of whom are all things. And we in him. Who bless that wonderful name, Jesus? See, when you got saved, when you got saved, then you got born again. You got that spiritual birth. You became, and you are, and you are in Him now. You are in God. Bless that wonderful name. And one Lord. Oh, bless that one. He said, and He said, one Lord, Jesus Christ. He said, one Lord. Oh, did you hear that? One Lord, not two Lords, not three Lords, but one Lord and one God. One Lord and one God. One Lord and one Lord, one Lord and one God, and that Lord is Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. By whom are all things. And we by him. And because of him, we are into it too. So we got it all. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. 
<laughs> Aren't you glad that you serve the God that can do the impossible? <laughs> Aren't you glad today that you serve the God that can do the impossible? And you should be saying, thank you, Jesus. I serve the impossible God, the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I can also say my Father, because I've been born again and been accepted into his family. And my spirit cry out, Abba, Father, oh, the impossible God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. In order for God to be, in order for God to do the impossible in your life, you must believe that God exists. You must believe that God exists. Let's go to Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. God, I know that one by heart. Hebrews 11.6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm talking about God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can't please God if you ain't got no faith in him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Or you must believe that he exists. If you come to God, you got to believe that God exists. I'm talking about the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In your father to you that believe and been born again. Uh, now I'm talking about that God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. But you got to believe he exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And he blessed them that diligently seeks him. He lives out for them that diligently seeks him. That means persistently and continuously seeks him. Where are you at? Do you believe that God exists? If you believe that God exists, you're on the right track to having God do the impossible in your life. In your life. God can do more than what we more than what you think or imagine. Ephesians 3:20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now look up now, now listen to what it says. Now unto God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, way above all that we ask or think. Whatever you ask for or what you think, God can even do better. God can even do better. See, God is not limited. God can do better. That's why he is called the impossible God. I'm letting you know. It's an adjective in front of him to let you know that he is the impossible God. He can make stuff happen where nobody else can make nothing happen. Because he is the impossible God. Uh, <clears throat> according to the power that worketh in us. And then the power that worketh in us. The power worketh in us. See, we got the Holy Spirit working in us. That's the power. That's working in us. Now, and you know why we got that power? Because God is inside of us. We got the spirit of the impossible God inside of us. Do you believe in the power that he has given you? The things that you thought you couldn't do, you can do them today. The living your Christian life out, you can do it today by the power that's inside of you. See, in your mind, you might think you can't do it. But when that spirit take over, you know you can do it. And then it gives you the power to believe that anything you ask or think that God is going to take care of it. And then it gives you the power to believe that even what you ask or think, God can even do better than that. Bless that wonderful name. He proven that in my life. He proven that in my life. I'm my eyewitness that God works. God works, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. God's work. Then uh, all things are possible with God. Go with me to Mark 10, 26, 27. Got to, I got to do all these verses. Mark 10. I don't want to miss nothing. J 
God is so good to me. In verse 17, Mark 10, 26 and 27. Mark 10, 26 and 27, and it says, And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who can be saved? So the disciples asked them, Who can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, With man it is impossible. With man, you can't see nobody being saved. You can't see nobody being delivered. You can't see that. He said, With man it is impossible. With people it is impossible. But not with God. But he said, It's not impossible with God. That's why I call him the impossible God, because he do the impossible. Uh, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And then it goes on to say, for with God, hear me out. For with God, for with God, all things are possible. Do you believe that today? Not some things, but all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. Let's understand that. Let's grab a hold on to it. And let's do it. And let's do it. Then go with me to Mark 14, 36. Mark 14, 36. Then Jesus, when he was getting ready to face the cross, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. But he said, regardless, even though all things are possible with you, God, but let your will be done. He said, but let your will be done. He said, but let your will be done. That's what he said, but let your will be done. And then go with me to Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, 23. Go with me to Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Did you hear what Jesus said? Did you really hear what Jesus said? Jesus said unto him, if you can believe, if you can believe, he said, now you got to believe. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. He said, he didn't say some things was possible to him that believe. He said, all things are possible to him that believe. So we got to work on our believing because all things are possible to him that believe. Not some things, all things are possible to him that believe. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I believe that. I'm trying to grow more and more in that area. All things are possible to him that believe. Where is your belief at? Is your belief in God? Is your belief in God? Do you believe in the impossible God? The God that can do the impossible. All things are possible to him that believe. Chew on, chew on that a little bit and digest it. All things are possible to him that believe. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. God knows the plans he has for you. Go to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts or the plans that I think toward you, that I plan for you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, plan of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
to give you a good end. So he said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. So God knows what he got planned for us already, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, he said, so you can have peace. He got a plan for you to have peace and not of evil. You see, he want to get you out of all this evil, blessed that wonderful name. Jesus. That's what the new heaven and the new earth is all about. To give you an expected end, to give you a good future. And that future is with him and his son, Jesus Christ, in the new heaven and in the new earth. That you have eternity life with them and live in peace forever and ever. And there would be no more crying there. There would be no evil there, blessed that wonderful name, Jesus. To give you an expected end, to give you a good end. An end to look forward to. The end of this life to a beautiful life in the future with God. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. God let Jeremiah, God let Jeremiah know nothing's too hard for him. Go with me to Jeremiah 32. Jeremiah 32, verse uh, 26 and 27 and 17. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold! I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. He said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He said, is there anything too hard for me? God said to you, he said, is there anything too hard for me? Then Jeremiah go with me to 17. 17 said, and Lord God, behold, though thou hast made the heavens and the earth, by the great powers and stretched out irons, and there is nothing too hard for thee. See, 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 Jeremiah said, There is nothing too hard for God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. See, there is nothing too hard for God. We got to believe like that. We got to believe the same way that Jeremiah believed. There is nothing too hard for God. We got to get that in our soul, we got to get that in our heart. We got to get that in our mind. We got to get that in our, in our being all over. That there's nothing too hard for God. I believe that. I live it. I believe there's nothing too hard for God. We don't need to question what God can do. We just need to believe that God can do it. We got to have the mindset just like Jeremiah. There's nothing too hard for God. Walk around your house, driving down the street, at work, wherever you may see, and say there's nothing too hard for God. Get it inside of you. Let it make rest in you. There's nothing too hard for God. Let it fill your belly up. Let it fill your head up and say there's nothing too hard for God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. There's nothing too hard for God. That was Jeremiah. That was Jeremiah. That was Jeremiah. He told us, talking to God, there's nothing too hard for God. Can you believe that? Then he goes on, he said, don't be afraid. God is with you. Go to Isaiah 41 10. Isaiah 41 10. Isaiah 41.10, fear you not, or fear thou not. So he said, don't be scared. God said, him, don't be scared. I am with you. You got the impossible God, which he said, I am with you. You are not by yourself. That's the impossible God talking right there. Be not dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For I am God. He said, what did he say? What did he say? For I am God. He didn't say, I think I'm God. I might be God. He said, for I am God. And he said, because I am God, don't be scared and don't be discouraged. For I 
am your God. Do you take it personal? Is God your God? Is the God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, your God? I will strengthen you. You say, oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. See, he said, I will strengthen you. See, God give us strength. God give us strength. Yeah, I will help you. He said, look at that. And God will help you. I'm talking about the impossible God. The God that does the impossible. He said, I will help you. Yay. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And he said, I will keep you with the right hand of my righteousness. So God is going to do the work. All we got to do is trust him. See, God doing the work. Look at it right there. God is literally doing the work. Isaiah 41. 10. God is literally doing the work. Look, look what he said. He tell us, fear not. He said, don't be scared. He said, for I am with you. She said, don't be scared because I am with you. Be not dismayed or do not or, 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 or be not discouraged or don't get hopeless or something in that nature. For I, your God. He said, don't get discouraged. Don't become hopeless because what? I'm your God. The impossible God, the God that do the impossible is your God and my God. He, then he said, I will strengthen you. He didn't say he was going to strengthen himself. God said, I will strengthen you. God will give you all strength. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yeah, I will help thee. And he said he gave us the Holy Spirit to help us. It's our helper. It's our helper. And he said you come to the throne of grace. The throne of grace. And he said he will help you there too. So God help us in all areas of our life. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And he said I will keep you with the right hand of my righteousness. He said I will keep you with the right hand of my righteousness. That righteousness is in Jesus Christ. That righteousness is in Jesus Christ. You want to be righteous today? You got to believe in the, in the Son of God. You got to believe in Jesus Christ and let God work in your life. But you see, God doing all the work. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe because God is doing all the work. God is doing all the work. God is doing all the work. Now that you serve the impossible God, trust him. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, which everybody probably familiar with, a lot of you, but it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in God. Trust in the God that do the impossible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not onto your own understanding. He said, don't trust your understanding. Just trust God. Because your understanding might mess everything else. Just trust God. Just trust God. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He said, in whatever you do, acknowledge God in it. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. He said, Whatever you do, acknowledge God in it. Know God is playing a part in it. Acknowledge God. <laughs> acknowledge God. In all that ways, acknowledge him. Know that God is involved. And he shall direct your paths. And he shall direct your paths. And he shall direct your paths. How do you like the message about the impossible God? The God that do the impossible. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope this message touched you and I hope that it's blessed you. Feel free to share this with your friends. You can catch me on YouTube. My channel is Thomas Patterson. You can catch me on Twitter as well. Feel free. I just want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I want you to know that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. And I want you to continue in God's word and apply it in your life because God gets your back. The impossible God 
is going to take care of you. That God that do the impossible is going to take care of you. All you got to do is trust in him. All you got to do is trust in him. I hope this message touched you. I hope to see you next week with another with, with, with another with another message. If it's God's will, I will be there in Jesus' name.